So hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome back to uh, open form discussion. So in the last video we're talking about, oops, wrong one. Well, in the last video we're talking about the um, parallel running in parallel, and we are seeing we're wanting to see what effect this split mesh region does. Now, uh, let's go and see what, uh, yeah, we we are we were debugging some things about this uh, piezo foam. So you can as uh, see we see the log piezo foam. And we, we see something funny happening. It says that we can't find some patch field entries. And we are trying to solve that. Okay, so something must be wrong. And, uh, well, perhaps, you know, logically speaking, we might uh, think that this speed mesh region uh, has something to do with it. Um, but let's take a look at what speed mesh region does first. Okay, so let's take a look, look at the log split mesh regions. Okay. Yeah, my friend just came in. Yeah. Log dot split mesh regions. Is it? No. Where is this? Yeah, log dot snappy hex mesh. Okay. Okay, all run. Oh well. Okay, let me fast forward this, yeah. So basically on your right terminal, I'm running I'm running a uh, this uh, case again. Just they are all clean and um yeah, I just want to see what this uh, split mesh region actually is doing and see whether that's the answer. Now, okay, so this is a split mesh region parallel decomposed parallel dict. We already know what that roughly talks about. And we look, okay, so this is the number of regions, which is five. And what are these regions? Bottom air, left solid, top air, heater, and right solid. These are the things I'm highlighting over here. Now, there are five regions, zero, one, two, three, and four. So these are five in total. Um, so yeah, um, thing about split mesh regions, it, it is there. The reason why it is there is because there is a conjugate heat transfer. Um, so the, this this actually solves for heat transfer between a solid and a fluid. And definitely you have to use different solvers for the solid. For example, you have to use a Laplacian foam, which is a conduction heat solver uh, for the solid. And um, some pimple foam, uh, which is a convection solver for the liquid. Or the fluid so this helps to split the regions and has and for our case because there's only one fluid and it's not even a heat it's not conjugate heat transferred and you have no need for multiple regions this is not actually very relevant now the other the other thing is that okay right let's look at other foam tutorials open foam tutorials and we want to see whether um, we want to see whether um, there are other cases which uh, have similar things, you know, that there's a snappy hex mesh going on and then we start to run some kind of files, alright? So for example, this uh, we want to see uh, what code they typed in so that we can check it and see whether our all run parallel code has something wrong with it. Okay, so I'm going to look at the motorbike case and we're going to look at their all run case. Oops. I all run okay so all right so they run snappy hex mesh first this this we can kind of ignore it's not really useful so they run block mesh first then they decompose for the parallel processing then they run the snappy hex mesh in parallel and restore the zero directory in processor mode and then they run parallel this patch summary and check mesh all right so what's this what do these things actually do and does it help with our our um, does it help with our problem? Well, check mesh. We have a clue already. Check mesh actually just checks the mesh, as in it checks whether the the mesh is properly done. So we can run check mesh in parallel here and see what happens. So again, we'll have firewalls which I will have to allow. Okay. Okay, so there, there is some uh, foam fatal error. Attempt to run parallel on one processor. Alright, so there's something I need to do to run check mesh first. We'll go look at the all run parallel. And instead of uh, instead of uh, doing this, uh, you know, doing this, 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 doing it this way, this uh, running check mesh one at a time, you have to run it while the the simulation is uh, decomposed 
So there is a run application decompose parallel and then reconstruct which we which uh, pieces everything back together so that we can get our results. Now if we run the reconstruct parallel together, uh, we cannot we cannot uh, we don't have you know four processes to run on again. So if you want to run the check mesh in parallel, we have to do it here. All it actually does is just to check the mesh. So the co correct code is to run in parallel check mesh. Okay, that's all we have to do. And we run in parallel patch summary because th this is the other thing here that again maybe could sol help solve it for us. But as we find out later, it won't actually do anything. So, but um, this is this is some of the thought processes that go behind debugging. We want to compare our script to what is being run in the tutorials and check for differences and see whether you know that actually uh, helps. And of course, one more thing, we use the uh, run parallel over here in topo set and create patch instead of run application. So run application is if you want to run in serial, series mode, rather than in parallel. So if you run application topo set, you will not, you will not uh, have things going on in multiple processes. Okay, so I'll just replace that and write. And of course, if anything goes wrong, we can use a hard reset on uh, using the Git software. Um, so that's why, um, yeah, it's it's okay to just edit like that. And uh, let's do that. We'll write, write and quit, and uh, we'll all run parallel to see what's going on again. This time I won't run in the background. And just to take note, look at how much data we are using. Uh, okay. How much CPU and why is this? Uh, we have Snappy Hex Mesh and CHT Multi Region Foam going on. Plus, of course, I'm recording this and that will take up some CPU power as well. So, you can run lots of things in parallel, but um, just beware, it'll take up lots of your CPU power. Hmm. And here we have eight processes going on. You see, one, two, three, four, CHT Multi Region Foam and four for Snappy Hex Mesh. So, this is just to keep you informed on how. What uh, how much CPU power you are using, right? All right. So again, I'm gonna fast forward. Hopefully, we will um, yeah, we'll see what's wrong and uh, we'll we'll see what actually patch summary and okay again firewall. It's very annoying. And I'll just press allow. Allow okay, and now this this part is ended. Okay, patch summary will allow that. Piece of foam will allow that. All right, so let's see if yeah, let's see if uh, anything goes wrong. Let's look at the uh, locked up piece of foam. And of course, uh. As usual, we have the same error as just now. The parallel run will exit. Let's look at uh, log log create patch. No, log dot check mesh. So it's checking the mesh for time equals zero. All this, and it says the mesh is okay. So nothing is really wrong with the uh, mesh over here. But let's take a look at the log log patch summary, and then. If you take a look, it says that we cannot find this patch field entry for processor boundary 3 to 0. So what is processor boundary 3 to 0? Let's take a look here. It says the file in the home, um, my user, GitHub software, blah, blah, blah. Then in the processor 3, in the zero, in the zero file, the U boundary field, this, this thing is missing. So let's take a look. And this is part of debugging anyway. So let's take a look at their processors. So for example, processor 3. Okay, I show you CD, processor 3. And we look at the, the zero file. And let's take a look at U. And we look at the boundary field. There's only a top patch, wall, and bottom patch. Which is well and good in a serial case. But in a parallel case, uh, we find that you know there'll be some intermediate patches. Because you're chopping up your simulation into multiple bits, there will be uh, extra patches. For example, um, okay, let me use paint to illustrate what I, what's happening. Paint. 
All right, so for example, we have the pipe here and we are splitting it up into multiple parts. All right, so now um, we will have this patch that we have to take note and this patch that we have to take note. So there's an interface between, let's say, this, this, uh, this uh, region A and region B and region C. And then these interfaces will, will need uh, new patches all right, to, to tell open from, hey, there's some boundary condition over here that needs to be interfacing A and B, and that has to be in this boundary field. All right. Okay, so usually we can find what the necessary patches are in constant polymesh, and we take a look at this thing called boundary. So if you look at boundary, we see our standard vanilla three patches, the top patch, the wall, and the bottom patch. So these are a, a pipe that parallel to the Z axis. But we also have these two patch patches. It says a uh, processor boundary three to zero, processor boundary three to two. So between um, again, for example, if let's say um, this is processor three, and then let's say zero is here. This, for example, is not the, not the actual representation. So there's a boundary going from three to two, and a boundary from uh, oh, sorry, boundary going from three to two, and boundary going from zero to three or three to zero. So all these will need to be written into, into the zero file, right? And uh, yeah, check mesh and uh, patch summary is not going to help us uh, write it together. Right, so um, what are we supposed to do? Is there a way to automate this process? And that's the most important because uh, I, I don't really want a case where you know I have to go and write in all this uh, processor boundary three to two to three to zero for every single processor because uh, for example processor three you have two more extra and then you have to write across all these files which is just not the most convenient thing so, oops wrong button so um, well what can we do for now Let's take a look at our all run parallel. Okay, so apparently this doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to delete this and delete this. This is not actually helping at all. Um, what what can we then do? All right, so um, first thing first, maybe one well one of the first things we can do is to uh, well we run it as per the you no know, pimple foam case all right okay we we look at the uh, we've seen this pimple foam case that I was running before I believe it's in the tutorials. Let me go and look for the pimple foam case. Yep, so I've navigated to the pimple foam case in this directory. Um, as per normal, um, so all it does is the all run pre, and then it runs a decompose parallel, runs in, runs the application in parallel for for in this case it's pimple foam, and then runs the reconstruct parallel. So. I mean, one possible scrappy way to work around this is first, um, well, um, we run all snappy hex mesh everything in uh, in series first, and then we run piezo foam in parallel. That is guaranteed to work. So let's look at take a look at what Oran Pre does. Yeah, see, we run everything in series. And then we run it in parallel. So block mesh, so uh, snappy X mesh, topo set create patch. Everything run in series. And then um, piezo foam we run in parallel. And then let's take a look at what the boundary conditions are. And we want to see also whether we can uh, start running our our uh, snappy X mesh in parallel. And we try and run piezo foam in parallel as well. I mean, that's the ideal to just run everything in parallel, so it's faster. Um, 
But for now, we'll just, in the next video, we'll want to talk about doing it the simple way and we take a look at, hey, are the boundary conditions written properly? And then we'll debug things from there. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.